All right, so Royal Caribbean has four ships sailing Alaska this season. And today we're going to look at brilliance of the seas and find out if any of the itineraries are even worth booking. Let's jump right in. Hey, welcome to This is the Cruise. I'm Clint, and this is the channel where we look at upcoming cruise itineraries and try to figure out if this is the cruise for you. This is part one of my Royal Caribbean Alaskan series for 2024. In part two, we'll look at Quantum of the Seas, and then in part three, we'll look at Radiance of the Seas, and in part four, we'll look at Ovation of the Seas, and then finally, in part five, I'll wrap it up and do a top five cruises on Royal Caribbean to Alaska, and we'll see what's best of the best. And so today in part one, we're looking at Royal Caribbean's Brilliance of the Seas, Alaskan itineraries for 2024. I went through every single one of Royal Caribbean's Alaskan itineraries, waded through them all. I categorized them. I looked at what ports they're going to. I got rid of all of the land tours that you could take before a cruise because all I wanted to do was get to the itineraries themselves. And it's a lot to go through. So I hope you find this helpful. It's gonna be kind of fun as we get into it. But before I do dive into this, if you appreciate the content, I hope you like it and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. I'm trying to build that subscriber base. And if you find any of these reviews helpful to where they help you pick an itinerary, consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a, a link in the description below. You can make a donation to the channel, secure and safe. And again, it helps me, supports me, and I really appreciate that. With the exception of one itinerary, Brilliance of the Seas is doing seven-day itineraries out of Vancouver. The exception is a single six-day itinerary, and we'll look at that as well. These are all inside passage cruises, which is a really big bonus. I have friends, that we cruise with frequently who will only book Alaskan cruises if it's taking the inside passage. If it doesn't take the inside passage, they're not even gonna do it. So it's really important to them. And I think for a lot of people who've never done an Alaskan cruise in particular, the inside passage is such a great way to introduce yourself to that Southeastern part of Alaska. So let's quickly look at the destination ports that you could go to on Brilliance of the Seas. It's gonna be some combination of the following. Haines, Alaska, Juneau, Ketchikan, Icy Strait Point, Sitka, and Skagway. Your glacier cruisings, which will be a day of cruising a glacier, will be one of two glaciers, either Hubbard Glacier and or Tracy Arm Dawes and Dawes Glacier. That's kind of one day of cruising. This gets really interesting, so stay tuned for kind of a surprise itinerary on this. Remember, the more glaciers you cruise though, the fewer stops that you'll have. So you kind of have to balance that as you're looking at the itineraries. Do I want to get off the ship onto land and explore a town, a city, and experience the culture? Or do I want to stay on the ship and cruise by some glaciers and see the majesty of the Alaskan wilderness? A, you know, a bonus with these itineraries is that they begin and end in Vancouver, which means that they don't actually have to make the Jones Act stop that you will have to make if you're cruising from Seattle. You will also see that some of the other ships, even though they start in Vancouver, also make a Canadian stop when they don't need to. So Brilliance of the Seas has a leg up on some of the other ships and what they're doing. So typically in my videos, I walk you through every single itinerary. We dig in and, and go deep and try to pick the best of the bunch. For these, I'm gonna actually do it a little differently. I'm going to point out the ones that you absolutely should avoid or the ones that are really the weaker of the bunch. Here's the thing, cruising Alaska is almost always great if you have your expectations set appropriately. For example, some itineraries may not go to any glaciers. If you know that going in and you're okay with it, you can have a great time. If you're expecting to cruise by glaciers and you book one that doesn't actually go to glaciers, then you may be disappointed. So it's good to go in with the proper expectations. If you're expecting glacier after glacier after glacier, I'm, I'm telling you, Royal Caribbean doesn't do a ton of glacier cruising. They don't go to Glacier Bay. If you want some itineraries that 
do a lot more glacier cruising, check out my ultimate Alaskan itinerary video that I just launched before this series, and you can get an idea of what you could do if you really wanna see a lot of glaciers. With that, let's jump right in. Itinerary number one to avoid. It's a six night that leaves on May 6th, and my reason is it's just too short. It's only six nights. You go to Juneau, Skagway, you cruise Tracy Arm Glacier, and while the inside passage is nice, it doesn't necessarily feel like a destination, and then you cruise home. I mean, this is two stops and a glacier, six nights. I would do this cruise if it was super cheap. This one gets a Clint's cruisability score of 15.42, and I can tell you right now, it's the weakest of the bunch. Yeah, the only reason to book this cruise is if it's less than $100 a night, and maybe even way less than $100 a night. So if you just happen to have that kind of second week of May free, and there's a last minute deal, yeah, go for it. The next itinerary to avoid is the one leaving either July 14th or August 11th. The stop combinations aren't quite strong enough to carry this one. And while I do, honestly, I really do love Sitka and Juno is certainly interesting. Icy Straight Point is maybe the weakest stop on this list. If you are on this itinerary and you are going to Icy Straight Point, I'd recommend maybe getting out of the more touristy area and try to visit Huna if possible. You know, the local culture is wonderful there. Just sometimes navigating in and around Alaska, the times fluctuate quite a bit and you may not have enough time. So this one gets a Clint's cruisability score of 17.73. It's a nice cruise, but it is the weakest of the seven days. You know, so there are a handful of middle of the road itineraries, and I would just watch out for the ones that visit Haines, Alaska. And Haines is a nice stop, but it's really nice if it's paired with Skagway. Skagway has the White Mountain train and Haines is, is much less touristy, which is nice. You know, and if you've already been to Skagway, Haines would be a great, a great stop to add to your list of having places having visited. But I think most people are going to want to go to Skagway. Again, it is more touristy. This is an opportunity to visit a place more like Sitka that has a less touristy feel to it. But cruises typically either typically but cruises typically either go to Haines or Skagway, and Skagway does have that white, the White Pass train. The downside to going to Skagway is that it can get pretty packed with people, and if there's another mega ship coming in at the same time, you may you may not even be able to do the train. So it's a consideration. The itinerary dates here, the ones to kind of look out for, at least make sure that you know what you're getting into, are May 12th, May 19th, June 16th, and September 8th. You know, they go to Haines and do Skip Skagway. Maybe avoid those, again, if you haven't been to Skagway yet. And this one gets a Clint's cruisability score of 17.77, which is on the lower side of the Brilliance of the Seas itineraries. And finally, I'm going to recommend that you avoid the September 15th sailing. It is getting late in the season, which means the price may be really attractive. And if you have the time, I mean, why not? If the price is great, you get a vacation, you get your food taken care of, you get taken care of, you get entertainment, and you get to go to the wilderness of Alaska, at least the southeastern wilderness of Alaska. And of course, the peaceful cruising of Inside Passage, which you really can't pass up. Here you'll go to Sitka, Juneau, and Ketchikan with a cruise of Hubbard Glacier, but you may not see much. The later you get in the season into September, the weather gets more unpredictable, and oftentimes it can be rainy and cloudy and foggy, so there may not be much to see there. So all things being equal, just consider that. However, the stops are decent, so this one gets a Clint's cruisability score of 18.26. It's really not bad. It's just the timing that that is a cause of concern here. So just make sure you're you know what you're getting into. Okay, so the high score ratings here. The sailings on June 9th and 30th, July 28th, and August 25th. They visit Sitka, Juneau, and Icy Strait, and Ketchikan, and then also cruise Tracy Arm Fjord. They all score a 20.36. That's really solid for these itineraries and for actually all of the Royal Caribbean Alaskan itineraries. That's right on par with the top tier itineraries that they're offering. Sailings on May 26th and June 2nd and August 18th go to Sitka, Juneau, Haines, and Ketchikan and cruise Tracy Arm Fjord, swapping Icy Strait for Haines. That's not a bad swap, 
and actually bumps the score up a little bit to 20.45, 20.45. I, l- listen, I actually like Icy Straight Point. I had a good time there, but we were there when there wasn't a bunch of people there. And again, it really just kind of comes down to how many people are in port. Icy Straight Point is kind of a tourist destination in Alaska. And then to get into the local culture, you need to go to Huna. So just kind of keep that in mind. There's, a, there's enough to see and do at Icy Straight Point to enjoy your, enjoy your time. So it's, it's, it's definitely worth a stop. But I think Haynes is actually a little better stop than Icy Straight Point. Really, we're starting to split hairs here. The highest itineraries leave on June 23rd and July 21st. They visit Sitka, Juneau, Skagway, and Ketchikan, and then cruise Tracy Arm Fjord. These itineraries come in with a Clint's Cruisability score of 20.71, right? So we really, these are really close together. This is just the highest rated itinerary on Brilliance of the Seas Alaskan cruises. You can see these last three itineraries are all pretty much on par. You're just talking about Skagway, Haines, and Icy Strait Point sort of being cycled in and out. If you've never been to Alaska, I think the Skagway stop is probably the strongest of this bunch. And the Brilliance of the Seas is not a mega ship. So as long as there isn't another mega ship in port at the same time as you, you're going to have a great time in Skagway. Okay, I mentioned earlier that there was something really interesting that we wanted to look at, and that pretty much does cover it except for one itinerary. This itinerary is repeated on July 7th and August 4th and September 1st. It's a bit pricier than the others, but I wanted to point it out. Every other itinerary visits one glacier, usually Tracy Arm Fjord, and you know, there's that six day that goes to Hubbard Glacier instead. But what if we gave up one of the stops, say Icy Strait Point or Skagway, and went to another glacier instead? Well, if you want to visit more than one glacier destination, these itineraries are for you. In fact, they're the only Royal Caribbean itineraries across all four ships that go to two glaciers. These three dates go to Hubbard Glacier and Tracy Arm Fjord. Because we're not getting a port stop, they do score a little bit lower. They get some bonus score for the two glaciers, but they lose out on what you can do in a port. So these score a little lower at 18.64. That's still higher than some of the others on this list, and you get two glaciers. So that's, that in my book, that's pretty great. I would actually probably want to do that one for my first Alaskan cruise. And again, those dates are July 7th, August 4th, or September 1st. Okay, so which cruise can you say, this is the cruise for me? The overall winner is the Alaskan Inside Passage leaving June 23rd or July 21st. They get a Clint's Cruisability score of 20.71, and I will say that July 21st, at the time of recording this video, is the best deal of those two. So go ahead and book that now if you're interested. The best for glaciers though, as I mentioned, is the Alaskan Inside Passage leaving either July 7th, August 4th, or September 1st. With August 1st, interestingly enough, currently being the best deal, again at the time of recording the video, and they get a Clint's Cruisability score of 18.64. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that helps you out with Brilliance of the Seas. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for the upcoming parts two through five to find out even more Royal Caribbean offerings. See you next time. Oh,